My name is Kalila Reynolds. I'm a small business owner and a journalist, entrepreneur, among many other things. And about five years ago, I discovered the key to adulting. What does this mean? So many of us, we grow up and we are raised with the traditional beliefs of you go to school, you work hard, you get a good job, hopefully you get a promotion, you buy a house, and this is the extent of our financial education. And this is passed down generation to generation. And I did that, as Anna mentioned, you know, I went to university, got two degrees, did well, smart, had a great job, loved what I did, and still do, but I was broke. So I was a professional success, but a financial failure. And I know a lot of people can relate to that. You're in debt, you have the credit card debt, you owe courts, you owe this one, you owe that one, you're struggling to pay the school fees, you want to send your children to the best prep schools or whatever schools available, and you just, you just can't make the ends meet. And that was my situation up until about five years ago when I said to myself, Kalila, it's a smart for Brooke. You cannot be this smart and be struggling financially. And so I started looking at, well, what do the wealthy people that I know do? How did they get rich? How did they accumulate wealth? And I started paying attention to the very things that I was reporting on as a business journalist and implementing them in my own life. So we're gonna come to those strategies in just a few moments, but first, I want to set out the landscape for you because even five years ago, it's very different than today, as you would know. Five years ago, where were we? That was around 2017. Still somewhat recovering from the last recession, in the throes of an IMF program, and a lot was going on. And then we started seeing a gradual improvement in the economy, and then bam, 2020, COVID hit. And now we are in a position where 2022, 2021 and 2022 is emerging just as 2021 did as a year of very high inflation. Now, what is inflation? It's simply the change in the cost of goods and services over a specific period of time. And let's come to our very first slide. So this is data produced by the Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin, and they measure inflation. And I want you to pay special attention to that number circled in red on the bottom. Now, this uh, was produced in December 2021. The January figures aren't out yet. That will be out probably uh, either this week or next week. It will be out pretty soon. But look at what the calendar year to date inflation was. So January to December 2021, inflation was over 9%. And what does that mean? It means that the average cost of goods and services in Jamaica rose by 9% over the last calendar year. And 2022 is shaping up to be not that much better. So let's look at the second slide. If I can finish, ah, here we go. So inflation affects pretty much everything. So look at this headline recently, chicken prices soar again. You all know that, that familiar looking menu, KFC prices gone up again, and they keep going up. Like, I think KFC raised their prices like five times last year. They just raised prices again. I'm not even sure if that's the most recent menu, but their prices, you're looking at $1,000 and up for, I like, guess, standard KFC meal now. And then, and everybody loves KFC, so that's a part of <laughs> your the average Jamaican diet. And then last week we had this, KFC Jamaica hit by chicken shortage. So you know what that means? Price is going up yet again. And then we have cement prices going up. This article came out in January. Cement prices going up means house prices are going up. So construction prices in general are going up. And so that makes your dream of owning your own home even less attainable, unfortunately. And then we have oil prices hitting 90 US dollars a barrel for the first time since 2014. Now you really need to understand the significance of this because oil prices rising affect basically everything in our lives. Yes, there's gas and transportation prices, but it also goes into farming because you need tractors to run your farms. It also goes into the cost of your food products. It goes into travel costs. If you plan to fly out, if you need to import things, 
it trickles down to every single facet of life. And right now, we're at $90 a barrel, the highest in almost 10 years. And then we're looking, Forbes is saying, 100 US dollars a barrel? And if you think about it, the last time oil prices were this high, Jamaica was a part of the Petro-Caribe Agreement with Venezuela. And so we were able to defer a large chunk of our oil payments. We no longer have that agreement. But I wouldn't say that we're specifically in trouble now because of it, because our economy is a lot stronger than it was back then. We no longer need the IMF. We have our strong foreign reserves. But still, this is something that we need to keep our eye on because it affects inflation and it affects the cost of living in so many different facets of life that you may not even realize. Then we have the Jamaican dollar. So the Jamaican dollar has lost 16% of its value since COVID hit. On March 10, 2020, the JMD was $135.46 to one US. And as of yesterday, the Jamaican dollar is now $157.70 to one US. So we're approaching 158, 159, 160, and people are naturally getting concerned that $200 may be, you know, in the coming months. We remember a time not so long ago, a few months ago, when 150, I gave a presentation for the Ministry of Finance when I said 150, oh my God, you know, and that was just about three years ago. $100 a few years ago seemed far away, and now the Jamaican dollar is depreciating even further, which means less spending power. And then we come to what uh, some of you uh, would feel because 31 unions accepted the government's 4% wage increase. What did I say inflation was? 9%. How much did the Jamaican dollar depreciate? 16%. How much wage increase are you getting? 4%. And we understand that there are fiscal constraints and that there are other things that are part of the package that help to make up for this difference in what the wage increase is versus what inflation is, what depreciation is, and so on. But there are other things that you can do to offset this balance, and we're going to talk about them as well. So like I said before as well, the situation is improving, even under COVID time. So one of the factors that we see is that unemployment has decreased, meaning employment has increased, more people are working, we're now back down to about 7%. But look at this as well, before I come to the strategies for uh, how you can offset that balance. And I hope you can make out the numbers on this chart. I downloaded this from the Bank of Jamaica's website just yesterday. So most of us, like I said in the beginning, we are taught that you go to school, you get a good job, you work hard, you buy a house and you save your money. You work hard, you save up your money in a financial institution. Well, I want you to look at this chart and look at the column highlighted in yellow. These are the average interest rates on savings accounts in Jamaica, 0.4%. And this is up to November 2021, 0.4%. And if we were able to scroll up the chart, because the data on this spreadsheet actually goes back to 1996, you would see that there was a time when interest rates were a lot higher and it made sense to save your money in a financial institution because you were earning something like 12, 13, 14, even 15 percent on your savings accounts. And over the years, that has declined dramatically and we're now at just 0.4 percent interest rate on savings, and we all have heard the conversation about banking fees. You probably end up paying more than that in fees, because now they charge you to take out your money, to look at your money, to write a check, to anything, any, just to go in and check your balance. At the ATM, they are now charging you a fee for. So you end up paying more in fees than you receive in interest. And then when you look in the column in, at the column in blue, you see, okay, 3%, you can get about 3% interest rate uh, if you use a fixed deposit for about 12 months and over. So that's if you put your money in the bank and you agree to let them hold it for 12 months or more and you don't touch it at all for 12 months. So you don't have access to that cash during that period of time. And then you can get about 3% interest. But how much is inflation? 9%. 
How much was depreciation? 16%. So you are losing money if you keep your money in the bank, and that's the only store that you have for your money. You actually need to start investing, and that's more important now than ever. You absolutely have to start investing. And so let's come to some of the keys to wealth creation. Before I come to that, let me look at this, uh, this slide right here. So interest rates are going up. The BOJ has increased its policy interest rate to 2.5%, and that's a signal to the banks as to what type of interest they will charge. Or, sorry, not charge. Well, that too, because interest also applies to loans. But that signals how much interest rate they are going to earn and also how much interest they are going to pay to you. So they are going up, but still, 2.5%, the banks are not going to be much higher than that. So look, 3% maybe 4%, it still doesn't meet up with inflation. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to sink, like this unfortunate young lady here, or are you going to swim? You have got to learn how to swim in this new economic environment. Savings alone will not do it, and I've already outlined why that is the case. So let's look at the keys to wealth creation. Number one is real estate. And because of inflation, real estate prices have been rising dramatically over the past 10 years. And I expect that they will continue to do so in the coming years. Now look at this house in the photo. In 2016, that house was valued 25 million Jamaican dollars. And just using the interest rates, sorry, the inflation rates for each of these years, we see that in 2021, that house is now valued $32 million. And with inflation even higher now, how much will it be valued in 2022? Now this goes both ways because one, it means that that house that you dream of owning now costs a lot more than perhaps when you started saving for it. And so it's that much more out of reach, and it may feel like one step forward, two steps backward. But on the other hand, if you are able to access the capital, to access the money to purchase that house, you see the level of, uh, of appreciation of that asset over time. And this is one way that you can start building wealth. But we all know that there is a hurdle to this goal, to investing in real estate, and it is that you need access to a large amount of cash up front, even if that's through a loan. Now, the second key to wealth creation is entrepreneurship, and you're going to hear more about that later on today from some other panelists. And when we look at 2021, there was record business registration in 2021. Many, many people, over 17,000 new businesses registered in Jamaica, and nearly 5,000 new companies registered last year and partly due to the pandemic. And this is coming off 2020, when there was also another record. So 2020 was a record-setting year for business registrations, and then 2021 broke 2020's record, so taking it to an even higher level. Now, the thing with entrepreneurship is that it's not for everybody. So real estate investing will take up a lot of your money. Entrepreneurship, as an entrepreneur myself, I can tell you, it will take up a lot of your time. And it is not for everybody. You, not everybody has the skills. Not everybody has the desire to run a business. So the most accessible form of wealth creation is actually stock market investing. So when I said that I was looking at what the wealthy people I know were doing, a lot of them were doing this, investing in the stock market. Now last year on the Jamaica Stock Exchange was not the best year for the overall market. The main market only grew by 2%. And financial stocks in particular were, were hard hits. They have yet to recover from COVID. However, the junior market, and unfortunately my slide is a little bit jumbled, but if you can make out there, the junior market grew by 29%. And the junior market simply refers to companies that are listed on the stock exchange that have a smaller size than your big NCB and your Sagicor. So you have the smaller companies that list on the junior market. And these are companies that are really at their growth stage and are growing rapidly. And so the return on that, those investments last year, on average, an average means that you have some higher, you have some lower, 
the average return last year from investing on the junior market was 29%. And if you're looking at the US markets, the average return last year on the S&P 500 was 30%. So these are exciting times for investors and partly because of the situation that we have found ourselves in with the pandemic. So typically when you are in a recession and stock prices are down and everything is down and you're at the bottom, where is the only place to go? Up. And so you want to get involved. And I think this is a better time than almost any, even in history, to get started. Because if you start now, when everything is down, you will reap the benefits when things start going back up and up and up and up. And you will start seeing those returns. I also have bonds on that list. And bonds are simply a way of, uh, it's basically when you lend your money to a company or a government. So governments issue bonds, corporations issue bonds, and it's a way of them, a way for them to raise capital from the general public. They tend to be less risky than stocks, generally speaking, but they also tend to be uh, lower interest, because you know the rule, low risk, low reward, higher risk, high reward. And I pointed out bonds specifically because of the issue with interest rates. I said interest rates are going up. You saw where the Bank of Jamaica is making those policy decisions. The US Federal Reserve is also doing the same thing and raising interest rates. So bond rates, meaning the interest rate that you get from investing in a bond, are going to be going up. Now, there's another one that has become popular over the past five years or so, cryptocurrency. Now, the thing about cryptocurrency, and I, I don't have it on my three keys to wealth creation just yet, because it is relatively new. Now, the other three factors that we spoke about have existed for many, many decades. Bitcoin was only invented in 2009. Ethereum, which is another popular one, was invented in 2015. So we don't have the decades of data to really assess whether this can be uh, something for the future. And I, I, I'm, I am convinced that cryptocurrency is something for the future, but I also issue a caution that it is very volatile and it's not for the faint of heart. And if you look at the chart that's on the screen right now, you see the lines going way up and way down and way up and way down. That was the performance of Bitcoin last year. And you see that big number, $6.8 million? That's how much for one Bitcoin, 6.8 million Jamaican dollars for one Bitcoin as of yesterday. But we have seen with Bitcoin in the past year that that value can be cut in half almost overnight and then all of a sudden double again. So it is not for the faint of heart. If you are a risk taker, it is something that you could consider adding to your portfolio. But I just issue a word of caution on it. And I throw it in there because it's becoming increasingly popular. And I do believe that it is part of the future. So trends for, 2020, for 2022, what are we looking out for? What do we need to be on the cutting edge of? So number one, the JSC is about to start allowing direct trading on the US and Canadian markets from Jamaica. Now you can already purchase stocks in the US and Canadian markets and anywhere in the world, but there are some restrictions, there are some prohibitions. So there are ways to do it. Uh, you can try to get around the system and beat the system and you can open an account in one of these countries in order to do those trades. Sometimes you need to be a citizen in some cases, you need to provide certain documentation. There are also companies here that facilitate those types of transactions but they're a little bit more prohibitive because you need to have a larger sum of money as opposed to investing on the regular stock exchange where you can get started with even a thousand Jamaican dollars. You may need a larger sum of money to start investing on foreign exchanges through a local broker. So for the JSC to start to allow direct trading on the US and Canadian markets is really going to be a game changer in terms of access for regular people to those markets. So that's one of the trends that we need to be looking at, or I should say developments, because that's not necessarily a trend. 
Now, another trend we're looking at for 2022 is stock splits. Google is doing one in July, and Massey is doing one in March. And what is a stock split? Well, it's simply taking your shares and dividing them up. So Google right now, their stock costs about 3,000 US dollars. So if you have one share in Google, that share is worth 3,000 US dollars. When they split that share, they're doing a 20 to one stock split. They're going to split that share into 20. And now each share will be worth 150 US dollars. So 20 times 150, you still, it's still worth the same $3,000. So in existing shareholders, existing investors have nothing to lose. There's no difference in the amount that they own, the total amount. But for new shareholders and potential shareholders, it makes a world of a difference because $150 is much more affordable than $3,000 US dollars. So a lot of people are going to be looking to try to get into companies like Google because their stock price has become more affordable. And here in Jamaica, Massey has now listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, they're a Trinidadian company. Their stock price is now over 2,000 Jamaican dollars, which is the most expensive stock on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. When that stock split occurs on March 11, the stock price for Massey is going to go down to 100 Jamaican dollars. So there are opportunities in looking at things like this, developments like this. What other trends should we be looking out for? Well, the trend of IPOs continues. Companies listing on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. So far this year, we've already had Spur Tree Spices, and we're also expecting a few others, including Edufocal, Jamaica Fiberglass Company, and WePay. Now, if we look at Spur Tree Spices, which was the first listing of the year, let's look at their performance so far. So Spur Tree Price Spices, listed on the Junior Stock Exchange, remember I told you the smaller companies are really making bank, their stock price is already up 200%. The IPO price was $1, and it's now at $3.02 as of yesterday. And this company just listed it in January. So just in a few weeks, you could have already tripled your money by investing in this company. So how do you get started? <laughs> well, I'm going to make a shameless pitch here. You can take my Investing for Beginners Masterclass at kalilareynolds.com slash masterclass where I teach you the basics on how to get started. And it's not, this isn't a money-making venture for me per se. It's a passion project because so many people ask me directly, how do I get started? What do I do? What are the basic things that I need to learn? What is an IPO? What is a stock split? What are all these things? And that's covered in the masterclass. And once you have taken that and you've started your journey, I have a show for you as well. It's called Taking Stock with Kalila Reynolds on YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free for you to watch where we discuss the latest trends in business and finance. And you have an opportunity to see what the analysts think about certain developments in the markets and what perhaps you should be considering to add to your portfolio. And then, of course, you subscribe to my newsletter where you get all this information directly to your email inbox at kalilareynolds.com slash newsletter. And I want to leave you with this word. It is a lot more attainable than you think to get started. Many people believe mistakenly that you need hundreds of thousands of dollars. You have to already be rich in order to start investing. And that is absolutely not true. Investing is not only for the wealthy, investing is how you get wealthy. So start today with whatever you have. It could be as little as a thousand Jamaican dollars. Be consistent about your investments and build wealth because right now we are going to swim through 2022 and beyond. We are not going to let the financial situation and the economic situation bring us down. Let's get this money. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I know I talk to, I just listen to Kalila, I just feel rich. I <laughs> feel rich. Let me just sit down good in my chair, I just feel, you know, real rich. Turn on my day. You know what I mean? Tanto, where you there? Where you, you know how you feel? 
understand because I know how you feel. Jeez. Kalila, um, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> On behalf of our viewers, thank you so much. They, I'm sure you learned a lot. Like in, in the 15 minutes that just passed, you got the keys to wealth, to becoming wealthy in Jamaica. All right, that's a social media question, right, um, Shaquille? What are the three keys to wealth? Answer that question and you'll be able to get a prize, a wealth prize from the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. We're gonna sit down now, we're gonna have a chat with Kalila Reynolds just for her to answer your questions if you have them and for her to share some more information, some more wealthy tips. All right, Kalila, thank you so much again for that presentation. No. Oh, before I, before I go to Kalila, there's a question that I need to ask in the Mentimeter, and then um, Kalila can address it. That is, describe your money goals for 2022, all right? That is, describe your money goals for 2022, and here are the answers, uh, Kalila, this might interest you. Okay. All right, to travel the world soon. Ooh. How soon is soon? All right, first thing about goals, you see? They need to have a timeline. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. They need to be smart. We learn that. They need to be specific, mm -hmm. measurable, yes. attainable. Yeah, you can't travel the world, but you need to invest first of your money. They need to be time-bound. That means they need to have a deadline, all right? So for the person who said travel the world soon, we need to tighten that up. We need to make it more specific. Um, improve on my house and lower... Okay, soon come back to that one day. <laughs> <laughs> Invest, that, that looks like lower outflows. I wonder what that means. What that mean? All right, invest, save more. Uh, financial freedom, that is a money goal. And another, budget, increase inflows. Reduce expenses. By how much though? All right, so we have to get those, those goals more specific. By how much you want to reduce your expenses? What are you going to do? To purchase a car, what kind of car? How much you have? What is your budget? Make more money. Um, so if you were just listening to Kalila, you hear the tips. You hear them? Nice, big and plain and simple. Reduce debt. By how much? What are you going to take out? And to be philanthropic. So that's a money goal for some of our viewers for 2022. Uh, Kalila. Hmm. Those are some great goals. Some, by the there, way. there are some, there are oh, some great the, goals. The makings of some yeah, the great makings, goals, right? Like they, you need, said, they, they need to, to have right. more specific, right? And um, so, some, sometimes need to be put on them. So, um, do we have the answers to our social media questions? Not as yet. All right. So we won't speak about the three, um, the three keys to creating wealth in Jamaica just yet. But uh, one, what I found, you know, that I, I have a little insight into these. The inflation rate in Jamaica mm -hmm. now at 9%. Mm -hmm. I mean, for our viewers who, who know, the inflation target is 4 to 6%. So 3% outside of target is a significant development in Jamaica. And of course, we know why the pandemic has contributed to this. But Kalila, what I found interesting from your presentation was where you said that now is the best time more than ever, perhaps in recent history to start investing absolutely right, you you want to say some more about that for persons who don't get it for for persons who for whom it might seem counterintuitive why is that so absolutely so it's a key principle it's a basic principle yes. of business you yes. want to how do you make a profit at anything right buy low and sell high yes so you want to sell at a profit which means that you want to be looking for deals yeah if you are in any type of business if you are purchasing property yeah. you want to get the best price yeah. right yeah and if you eventually want to sell that property at a profit you're gonna sell it for a higher uh, price than you bought it for yeah if you are buying and selling goods on the street corner or whatever if you are in the restaurant business, uh -huh. you want to get your, your uh, commodities at a low price and then be able to sell them at a premium, like what KFC does, right? <laughs> you add value but to KFC it. can broke it up. No, <laughs> you no. add value to it and you sell at a premium. But right. the entire objective is to sell for more than you purchased it for, and right. that's how you make a profit. Well, the same principle applies to the stock market. And what have we been seeing during the pandemic? Yeah. We have seen stock prices plummet. Yeah. We have seen, particularly in 2020, you saw the stock market fall significantly in Jamaica, 
prices fell about 30% overall mm -hmm. in 2020. In 2019, NCB stock price was well over $200. Mm -hmm. What is it now? It is about $130 mm -hmm. to buy stock in NCB. Mm -hmm. Is NCB less of a company? Mm -mm. No? May not think NCB so. is still making money. Yes, sir. NCB <laughs> is still going to continue making money. Uh, for all intents and purposes, we don't see NCB going out of business anytime soon. Yes. But the stock price is half of what it was in 2019. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, this represents the perfect buying opportunity mm -hmm. for something like that stock and others that have suffered because of the financial crisis, of the, the health crisis, which has led mm -hmm. to the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. So you get to buy low. And then as the economy recovers right. and prices recover, right. you have an opportunity to sell at a profit. And that's the entire objective here. And if you are going to be investing for the long term, for your children's college, for retirement, mm -hmm. once again, you have a great opportunity to take advantage of a depressed market. And then eventually, when the stock prices rise, you make a profit. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Kalila. So you heard it. The reason why now is a, a better time than perhaps in recent history to, to start investing on the stock market is because some of the prices have plummeted. You buy low and then at a point in the future, not the very future, you know, not the near future, just all it little bit, nobody spend out the money. Sometime in the, very, um, in the very near future, you can sell at a profit. The mistake a lot of people yes. make when, when investing in the stock market is that they jump on a hype. Yes. So you see a stock suddenly start doing very, very well, right. and now all of a sudden I want it. Yes. So like right now, last week, Fontana, stock price rose 50% in one week from $7 to $12. Yes. And now everybody suddenly want Fontana. Right. But the time to have bought Fontana was not at $12, but at seven. At seven dollars. Or at the dollars. IPO when it was a dollar eighty eight right. cents just three years ago. <laughs> right. So yeah. You so, want to buy low and sell high. So, lady, so ladies and gentlemen, you can learn more in Kalila's masterclass. But right now, you get the masterclass right here on the Ministry of Finances Wealth Summit. If you are just joining us, you missed the wealthy part. Yeah? But we have a little, we have a little bit more for you. Because we're nice over here. We're nice bad. But before we go back to Kalila, uh, we asked the question on social media. What are the keys to wealth creation based on Kalila's presentation? All right, the winner is the number roll. We can't do the rolling thing with the tongue. May, 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 <laughs> may I try to practice it? The winner is Xavier Hutchinson. Okay, um, that says MOF 200M. What that mean? Uh, what that? MOF Zoom. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously, we need to take me for that show, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? MOF, he's, he's watching, I assume Xavier is a male. He's watching on the Zoom um, stream on the Ministry of Finances Facebook page. Uh, Facebook page, thank you. So the, the question, what are the keys to wealth creation? The answer, real estate, entrepreneurship the stock market through investing. And um, Kalila, you also did say bonds are another, another stream. Right, so I, I love that with stock market investing. Right. So investing in assets. So right. And these include stocks, bonds, and so on. Right. So um, for, the, for these persons who describe their money goals for 2022, all right, so based on what you shared with us, how can, for example, the person who wants to make more money reduce debt, the person who wants to, to reduce expenses in a real way, how can we guide that person? Well, those are two different questions, right. reducing <laughs> debt and reducing expenses. Right. Right. So, reducing expenses is a budget issue. Yes. So if you have a budget issue, you just need to look at your expenses, make a list of all of them and see what you can cut back. Yeah. Reducing debt now, there are different things that I see about this. It depends, first of all, on what type of debt that you actually have. Mm -hmm. So if you have high interest debt, such as a microfinance loan and credit card Cards. debt, <laughs> right. that can be very, very restrictive because those interest rates are upwards of 40% and you don't even realize that the interest rate is that high. Yeah. If you have something like a mortgage or a car loan, those are, and if you've gotten that within the past five, 10 years, those are typically 
about 10%. And if you've gotten it in the past five years, it will likely be less than 10%, looking at 6, 7, 8%, maybe 9% interest mm -hmm. rate. That, in my opinion, is manageable. Yes. Because you can make more than that interest by investing in something like the stock market. You can yes. get a higher return, and that can help you to pay off your debt faster. But if you have very high interest rate like credit card debt, you need to prioritize that even before you start investing because that is going to be a noose around your neck and you're never going to get out of it until you make it a priority. And one of the strategies I suggest is to utilize a salary deduction method. Mm -hmm. So what you do is what people say, paying yourself first. And you notice when you have a salary deduction, you never really notice that the money comes out of your, your salary because you don't really look at it, you don't look at the pay slip and you just learn to live on the rest. You learn to live with what actually does hit your bank account. So set up a salary deduction with your employer and have that go straight to your debt servicing or straight to your investment account. And that way that is automatically taken care of every month. All right, thanks you can't say you didn't learn it here um, from Kalila Reynolds on the Wealth Summit. So I have two more questions for you just to respond again to, to making more money. Um, you did allude to it in your presentation that some persons feel like the stock market is inaccessible, that you need a lot of money to, to get started. Really, what do you need to get started apart from just a decision, a deliberate decision? What else do, does one need? So the first thing that you absolutely need is to open up your investment account. Mm -hmm. And there are brokerage firms in Jamaica that don't even require any money to open up that investment account. And I have a full list in my broker guide. So you can just go in and it's typically the same documents that you need when you're creating a regular bank account. Yes. They ask you for your TRN, uh, proof of employment, mm -hmm. proof of address, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And you open up that investment account and that's how you start. And mm -hmm. then the next step, of course, is to start putting money in that right. investment account and <laughs> right. start actually investing. Yes. And stocks on the Jamaica Stock Exchange are relatively inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So like I said, the most expensive one now is 2000 which is massive, massive, which is way more expensive than most of them. Right. NCB is 100 and that's one of the priciest. Yes. So you can buy $100, $500, $1,000 worth of stock and then just build from there. And every month you invest another 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, whatever you can afford in that and watch it grow over time. All right. So the other two, let us, let us quickly wrap up by examining the other two keys to wealth, entrepreneurship. You became an entrepreneur in I 2020. Did. You did say it. It's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's a long-term commitment. What else, would you, what else would you advise persons who are thinking about it but have not yet made that decision? Right. So entrepreneurship does take a lot of time, but you don't have to just get up one day and quit your job and become an entrepreneur. <laughs> right. You can start as a side hustle. Yeah, start right. with whatever you have. Yes. You do not have to have this big amount of money and you think that you need all this investment in order to start. People may think, may look at me now, I have my own production studio. No, I didn't start with a production right. studio. Right. I started with just a cell phone, just yes. myself talking to a cell phone yes. and grew that into what it is now. Right. So you don't necessarily, you might, you, thank you, you might say, <laughs> oh, the bank won't give me a loan for this idea. Banks typically don't give loans for ideas at the <laughs> idea stage. They want to see that your business is successful and that you can repay them. Yes. So you start with whatever you have, wherever you are, and you build upon that and grow. All right. So the final key to wealth, real estate. All right. In your examples, 2016, a house costed 25 million. Today, in 2022, that has appreciated to 30. It's probably more than that. 32. <laughs> 32 million. I was just using average inflation oh, rates. Wow. And real estate inflation has actually been higher than average inflation. Ex so it's exactly. More than that now. Exactly. I think an average 10%. But for that person who would like to get to their first, for their first property, um, what is the simplest way? All right, so one of the reasons I also am so passionate about stock market investing yes. is that it can help you reach bigger goals faster, right. as opposed to simply just putting down money and saving for that house, which is a trap that myself and my husband fell into. Yes. We just had all our money in a savings account and you just add to the savings account every month. And then you realize the goal that you had, you were saving down for the 10% on a $25 million home. By the time you finally save the 10%, the $25 million home now costs $35 million. 
And so now you need to save more to meet the 10%. Mm -hmm. But investing can help you reach that bigger goal a lot faster. So like I said, just start with what you have and eventually you'll get there. Oh, thank you so much, Khalila Reddon.